What's up everyone? This is Mini here today coming at you with a great game replay from this patch. This game, I had a fun time taking out my Georgia on Warrior's Path, and this is a game that it felt like we were going to lose, but through force of wheel, we managed to pull back, and I was quite pleased with it. As always, before we get started, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on the video to help me make more great content. I appreciate it, as always. Anyway, let's get into this one. So, as... You can see it's all tier 9, double Georgia for us, along with a total of 5 battleships on each team, 3 cruisers, and 4 destroyers. No majorly known names on either side besides Kaiser and myself. Couple people from the stream in it, but we're gonna get into this. So, at the start, we spawn at sea. Now, for those of you that don't know, I love to play my Georgia as an aggressive battleship. I like to brawl because I got 11.3 kilometer secondaries, I got good guns, and I like to play this thing push style. So we're gonna watch and start from here. Now, we've only got three of us over here right now, though you can see the Jean Bard and uh, George and Chung Mu are coming over as well. But at the start, it's gonna be a Fletcher, Azuma, and myself. Worried for us is a Mogador and Ooster combination is gonna be really difficult to fight for a Fletcher, even with a Chung Mu starting to come over. If the Schultz shows up, the Schultz is going to smack, but the Fletcher can win, and then the Fletcher-Fletcher should be even. And as you can say, I'm already talking in chat about being prepared to kite, because I know that if it's the Fletcher-Oster, we or the Mogador-Oster, we got to get out. And I had the gut feeling we had the Div. And so we see the Riga, but I'm holding shots so I can stay undetected right now, because I don't have a great angle on it, and I already immediately know as soon as I see the Riga that it's the... Oster Mogador Div because the Riga's tealed with them. So immediately we go into kite mode. And if you have this, it's the same idea. Get yourself into kite mode. Get yourself prepped to get out of here safely because you don't know where they are. Take the first set of shots. Unfortunately, only three overpens and we can already see the Mogador. So we're going to turn it out. But we're already up to 4,700 damage. And we're pretty pleased. Because Riga's are notoriously difficult. And Petro's as well to hit. Gonna look at him again here as we continue to drift forward. The only reason I'm continuing on this line is because I've already seen the Mogador and now I've seen the Ooster Yetland. And since I can see the Torps, I feel comfortable moving the way I am. Bigger advantage here is the fact that we have the Ooster and even though he doesn't take a Torp there, we have a Jean Bar and a Shang Mu and as you can see, he just got himself smacked down to 7k. So even with him going dark, he's taken a bunch of damage. Unfortunately, at this point, our Azuma's died on the other side, so we've got a problem, and we gotta be careful. Now, shots are switched here. I don't like the Mogador shots, because trying to hit a Mogador at 11 kilometers and change range is a nightmare, because that thing's slippy as all get out. We're gonna take the shots at the line, because the Riga's behind the island right now, and we want to continue to harass ships. Plus, we've still got the secondaries for a moment on the Mogador. A little bit more damage than I wanted to take there, but it's okay. And we get a pen, but we're still not getting good, consistent damage. We are turning it in here, though, because I don't want to get out on that flank. I know the Oster doesn't have Torps, and I've got an island to cover me before the Mogador. But we're going to turn it in because we don't want to get locked on and border humping for the moment. So we're going to try to lock in and protect ourselves on that island because of the Lion and the Riga being there. Unfortunately, Lion goes dark, and then we do make the decision to turn it out to try to get our shots on the Riga. Because, as said before, I don't want to get stuck on the border. But, with the Riga in full retreat, the Lion being undetected behind an island, and both the Mogador and Oster being over at the far side of the cap and not in the cap, this is my best bet, using my speed boost to push myself and get a quick escape while it's safe. We can see the Mogador show up again briefly, Kaiser's there, but as you can see right now, we're down 60,000, almost 70,000 health, and we're in a problem spot. So we get undetected, and we're going to use that island to our advantage, stay out of spotting, and cut back north and get ourselves into a safer spot. Because we know that we need to stay alive, because the best thing we can do right now is stay alive. And then you're going to see us cut towards the 
middle again, and we're gonna work on that lion, because that lion is a threat, especially with the ability to heal. We wanna get him down, and we wanna avoid getting burned. Unfortunately, my aiming isn't the greatest here, so I only get, even though I get a pen and an overpen, it's only 3150 because I hit a gun, but it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. We're gonna cut in. We see that our Jean Bart has died and our Alsace is dead, which is a real big problem for us. But we finally get a good shot here on the line, getting that Citadel and three pens to put him down to 20k. So now we're gonna push in because we got a Fletch and we got an Azuma here. And even with a Moga door and an Ooster Yetlin, we have the ability we feel confident to push in. And we're gonna take the shots again on that lion. A little bit uncomfortable with the aiming there because I'm trying to guess his speed. But I guess well, and unfortunately this time it's only 10k because I get two pens and over pen, but ricochet a shot. We see the Mogador, so we know we're safe to kite around. And at this point, we're down only 20,000 health, but we are still down to who make that three ships at this point. And if you look at the map, this is where our team starts to be in an awkward spot. Let's observe where our ships are. Marco Polo's kiting away from a Minnesota, Alsace, Buffalo, Fletcher, DeGrosa, Seattle, Soyuz. They have an entire teamer that's going to take A and push into the middle. Their Lion's getting out of my range, and he's going to be able to challenge our Kronstadt that's sitting there at 51,000 health. Riga's kited out. We don't know where the Oster is, and we don't know where the Schultz is. So this is a rough spot, because even though it's only a 30,000 health uh, disadvantage right now, the issue becomes the fact that we okay, are four. down three ships, and that's major. Now, some of you are wondering, Minnie, why didn't you take the shots at the Riga? He's still in range. You could pop your spotter plane. Why not? Well, we talked about this. Riga's a pain in the butt to try to get good damage on with the maneuverability plus the armor. So, while we're going to look at her, it's not worth these shots because she's right there at the edge of the range. And even popping spotter plane is not going to make it worth it. Now, here comes our gutsy play. I choose not to, as you can see, cut it back here and come around the islands. I'm going to cut through the center. This could have been a very bad play for me because of the fact that there's a Mogador and an Ostra. I don't know where they are, so I'm going to lock myself in a position. Good news, we do get the Lion, but we've now lost our Z44, so we're still down three ships, and we're down to two DDs versus them having all four of theirs, which is rough. Plus, that Schultz being in the middle has a shot on the Kronstadt. So we're going to get over there, and we're looking for the Kronstadt. My gun placement is rough here. My gun, straight up, should not be pointed that way. I know I'm looking for the Seattle right now, but I should probably be prepped for the Mogador cutting across the uh, cap in front of me. Because if he does, I need to have my guns ready immediately. And fortunately, you can see I'm briefly turning them back. But now with radar detection, I'm going to look towards that Schultz. We can see everything. We see the Mogador down there. He's not in a position I can do yet, though. I'm going to want to get my secondaries on him. Schultz, Seattle, Fletcher, Soyuz are going to be my targets. And we're going to look. We're going to look. And we don't have the shots, so we're going to look and we're going to see what we can take. Now, we choose the Seattle. Why do I choose the Seattle? Well, Fletcher's in an or Schultz is in an awkward spot there. I could shoot the Fletcher, but he's behind an island, so it's no guarantee I hit. Mogador is close, but once again, he's still behind an island, so I'm going to be waiting until he comes out, and no guarantee I hit. So we're going to try to snag the Seattle that's sitting on the broadside as we start to push in here. And as we look, you will see that I do get lucky, and we do get the Citadel hit, which was important, because if we don't get the Citadel hit, uh, there, that's going to really be rough. But we have the Mogador spotted, so we're going to turn, we're going to look at this Mogador now. Riga's still sitting there at range, but he's not a big threat. The Mogador at 22,000 health is and i'm just thankful i'm getting my secondaries on him i got a jean bart to help and now we start to work him we see him starting to turn so we're going to line up the shots to try to snag him as he comes across and this is why i love the georgia three over pens does 4700 damage and since it's a mogador that's really really valuable there to get that much plus the fact that he's turning away now which means he did not have an angle to get torps off on so at this point, the Kronstadt 
is out of the cap, as you can see. He's left the cap. The Fletcher of Kaiser's coming up. But we're still down three ships. We're still down 250 points. And we're up on health by a little bit. But that doesn't help when you're down three ships because that's a quarter of the force. So we're looking at this Alsace now that's starting to come in. And we're going to start to work him because he is charging. So that makes him our first kill. So we see him. We start putting damage out on him. Now he's in range. So we're going to let our secondaries start to do work. And we're going to keep an eye on that Fletcher. And we're going to keep an eye on that uh, Alsace as well. Guns are going to be on the Alsace for now because he's the one I have the shots on. We're going to pop the heal to get ourselves back going. Only 83,000 damage so far. Now, it's a French ship and he's turning out. So I aim at the upper belt here because if I had aimed at the waterline, I probably don't hit. Plus the upper belt's still usually good for some nice damage. And as you can see, we get three pens there for 11,000, which puts us in a good spot. And now we see that the Mogador's back, so immediately back on to shooting at the Mogador with the main stuff, because we know we've got to watch out for his. We're going to back up here, and we're going to start to, as you can see, angle our ship so that we can try to dodge any torps. We see he's already launched the torps, which we're thankful for, because they're not coming for us, though I am on double fire, which is annoying. And once again, we're going to put out our guns, and this time, we're going to get two more pens, which is big, because that's another 3,000 off him. And at this point, we've started to pull the game back. We're only down one ship, their Mogador's hurt, and our health is now at 30,000, but it's still not a guarantee that we're gonna win this one. So we're gonna push in. We're enjoying the fact that we're burning the Mogador down and we're keeping an eye because we wanna burn him out of this game because getting him off the field is a real big advantage and at this point we're confident we do and as you can see we've now tied up the ship count only 20,000 health advantage and we've got a fletcher and a uh cyclone to make this difficult once again shoot ap at dds two hits on that fletcher 3,000 health that means i took him down from 13,000 health max down to 10k so he's already hurting speed boost gets us away from the torps and we can push into the middle we're still losing on points though, which is a problem. And our ships are still awkwardly stuck around that cap. Now, I'm starting to push into Gress to try to take fire off my uh, teammates and get us through the game. I gotta watch out for the Oster down here and I gotta watch out for the Fletcher because Kaiser doesn't have the health to take the fight comfortably. Neither does our Jean Bart because he's at 10,000 and he's starting to flood down. And as you can see, the health has gone back towards them once again. So we're gonna turn in here and get ourselves into the islands so that we can look for that Fletcher to show up again. But yeah, as we can see, our Jean Bart is unfortunately gonna go down here, which means we are now down another 150 points and we are down a ship again. Health pools are still similar, but no guarantee for anybody. And this is where, like I said, you go aggressive. I've got 61,000 health still. This is where it's time to charge and use that health to kill ships. Now, I will say, mistake I'm making here. We don't know where the Oster is, so the Oster could be coming up here and about to torp me. We don't know where the Soyuz is, so I'm give, the angle I'm giving might give angle to that Soyuz. Now we see the Oster, the Riga, and the Fletcher. Our focus is going to be on the Fletcher, because the Fletcher is the biggest threat to me right there. And once again, three overpens, 4,700 damage. He's down to 27,000 health or 2700 health unfortunately i didn't hit a one or two more because if i hit two more he's dead but the azuma has the shots in position he's dead and now we can look at that buffalo so we're going to start to turn ourselves to try to dodge any chance the fletcher had torps off while also angling there so we're going to slam the brake we're going to take a nasty chunk from that buffalo and we're going to take an even nastier chunk from that Soyuz, which is what I was worried about, is that Soyuz there. Because that was where I was scared I was going to get hammered, which unfortunately I did. But we got the Buffalo broadside. We're going to aim just above waterline. And we're going to get the Citadel, 18,000 damage. Leave him on 1,000 damage. And because I'm running Halsey, here comes the Confederate, which means I get the Implacable Talent, which is so, so juicy. And there we go. I don't get the kill on the buffalo, which I'm a little sad about. But having implacable proct is really, really nice. 
So now we're going to engage a Soyuz. So the best thing I can do in engaging a Soyuz is start trying to knock his guns out. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Unfortunately, first salvo, I don't. The reason I'm trying to knock his guns out, he is a tank and he's giving me a massive, uh, he's not giving me any angle here. I'm just seeing his bow. I'm not going to do a ton of damage to him. So best thing I can do is get fires on him, try to knock out the guns, get broadside, kill him from there. The other problem I have, which I'm not doing a good job paying attention to, is the Minnesota that's down here on my side. I've got 38,000 health, the Minnesota can easily kill me from this angle. And I realize that, so we are like, well, I'm caught in a rock and a hard place. So we're trying to go directly forward, continue to break the guns, but four hits does not break the gun, which is infuriating to me. But we're trying to time it so that as soon as the Soyuz shoots, I can switch my, I can turn my ship and get out of there. So we're just waiting right now. We're waiting until I'm either behind the island, which I'm now successfully behind so I can turn, and then we'll look at the Minnesota. Minnesota goes down, and we start to turn so we're safe from him, and now we're watching for that Ooster sending torps at me. We've still got one heal left, 36,000, but at this point, I'm feeling a lot more confident about our game. Health is still very similar, but we're now at two ships up, and above in health. And the other thing I'd like to compliment is this Marco Polo survived that entire time. Remember, this Marco Polo was over here against all of them. He managed to get out alive. But we're at 154,000. Our Georgia does go down, so that ties it back down to a one ship lead. Pardon me, thought it tied it up on ships, but it did not. But we hold two caps, a barely uh, their lead in points, and we're down a little bit in health. So we are stopping here because we've got to watch out for that Ooster Jutland and that Riga down there, and we're also worried about the Soyuz being behind us. Now, I'm a little less concerned about the Soyuz for the exact moment, because I don't think he's coming in front of me, because the Marco Polo would be saving me from that, but we're going to pop the spotter plane in hopes of finding both the Soyuz's exact position and, if we're really lucky, the Oster. So we see the Soyuz is doing a backup here, which we're going to take a look at, and we see that there is also and Ooster Yutland not spotted, so we don't know where he is. Our spotter goes down, but we kill the fighter. So we back up to keep playing the game with the Soyuz and keep him guessing. Now we're detected, which is the Oster coming out in front of us, which this is where having my guns looking at Soyuz is a problem because I don't have the shots for that Oster. So I'm going to hit him with secondaries, but I know he's trying to torp me. And thankfully the Kronstadt saves my bacon there for the most part. So I get the four torps that come out here, we proc the heal early, then we proc the repair. But unfortunately that took me down quite a lot of health, can't heal a ton of it, so that really puts me in a rough spot. And I should have been watching him because if I'm watching that way for him to come in front of me because I know there's a chance, I absolutely kill him before he can do anything. Now at this point we're saying okay with 123,000 health left and five ships up, I've got about I've got 20,000 health I got about a sixth of our health so there's some healthier ships but I know I can still do damage I'm already at 155,000 I've only got one kill though there's several other ships I probably could have had kills on so our job we're gonna look for these ships out here so we're gonna peek we're gonna look for that Riga we're gonna get the shots around the island and the Riga is going to go out which we're thankful for and then we're going to try to turn as hard as we can to not get killed by the Soyuz. And thankfully the rocks save our bacon there. So we're at 12K, but at this point, we're gonna start just go out and get up there and do as much damage as we can to him. Now, we do finally encap a gun here, 3150 on the damage, but we got our secondaries going. I got no way to heal a fire, but we're gonna turn, we're gonna bow in and we're going to work this ship because we're in a fine spot. The Seattle's going off towards sea, it looks like, but he's useless for them. We don't know where the FDG is, so the Soyuz with 52,000 health is a big, big portion of their remaining HP. So if we can force him down, if we can keep breaking guns, getting good damage on him, even possibly get a ram off here because we got the speed boost here in six seconds, we'll be quite happy. 7,600 health left. Once again, I feel like if I'd had my guns looking the right way for that Oster, I would have been able to do a lot more success because I would have had way more health remaining. But we're going to get the double end cap on the guns, which is going to allow me to continue to charge him. And we're going to see the Soyuz actually die there to the Kronstadt and the Torps from Kaiser save our bacon. So we're going to turn because we're not sure where that FDG has ended up. But at this point, we are up by 300 points. We're going to duck ourselves into A cap because that's the cap we need. And we're expecting that the FDG is probably somewhere like G2 so I can get behind this island, keep myself alive. 
and we'll speed up. But 176,000 damage so far, two kills, three citadels, four fires, and a confederate. It's a very satisfying game to hold so far. And of course, we're going to be able to take the cap, and this is where having teammates is beautiful. Kaiser smokes me up, so I can just stop and sit here in his smoke. And we see that the FTG is just sitting off on the edge of the map. So we're just going to sit here and smoke so we don't get spotted. And we're going to just start farming him down with AP shots. Unfortunately, once again, the issue here is I don't have a spotter plane, so he's about to go out of my range. But I hit him, 176,000 damage. Now we have our high caliber as well. And as you can see with uh, chat... Uh, our Azuma's very happy because we're pulling this back when she, she didn't think it was possible. This point, we're still sitting still. We continue to put shells down. Another 7,000 and change off him, up to 193,000. We're just trying to break uh, 200k because I see the Seattle's going down probably to the Marco Polo because we can see him back there in his health pool. So we just look. We keep going. Seattle goes down. This means that this might be my last set of shots. I get 5,000, which I'm so upset because that puts me just under 200k. And we put off the next set of shots. And here we go. And right before the game ends, we manage to land the shots. We get the one pen, which puts us right over top at 201,750 damage. And we manage to pull it back and carry the game. And so, our final results from that game, 1.8, almost 1.9 million credits received because I run all of my special flags on my Georgia plus a good camo, 21,000 uh, base XP, 14,800 free XP along with a confederate dreadnought high caliber, 201,000 total damage dealt with 70 shell hits, 2 destroyed, 4 set on fire, 3 citadels, and honestly, this game, I, I could have probably had 4 or 5 kills if I had a little better luck on some of the shots or where the damage was left. I mean, that Oster comes to mind, that Buffalo comes to mind as ones I could have killed the Seattle. Like, there was some options there on stuff I could have gotten damage on and had a Kraken, but it happens. Anyway... Uh, final statistics here, you can see all of our shells were AP, so 70 sh AP shells for 177,000 damage, another 161 HE shells for 1,500 damage, and 4 fires for 9,000 damage, uh, 15k off the Mogador, got the sink there, 8k off the Riga, got the sink there, 49,000 off the line, didn't get the kill, 31,000 off the Soyuz, 25k off the De Gross at the end, 24,000 off the Alsace, and then some smaller damages down here on some of the other ships like the Buffalo, the Seattle, etc, etc. And of course, the end of the game, top of the team by a country mile, 810 base XP higher than the next person. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, I really love the Georgia. Anyway, that's all for this video. As a quick reminder, don't forget, like the video if you enjoyed the game. Make sure to comment, leave me your thoughts on the gameplay as well as uh, what games you would love to see. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to help me continue to make more great content. This is Minnie, signing off.